Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to expand uh, an annual bed uh, further into my uh, turf in the uh, back garden space. Uh, this turf is actually going to go away back here. I, I found th this zoysia grass, it's just a bit too shady and it stays thin. And uh, so I just stopped weeding it um, midway through last year. And I've just at that point decided it's not going to be turf in the future. Got a really nice turf spot out in the front and uh, it's in the full sun and it's totally happy. Definitely don't want to be trying fescue, um, which would probably be the more appropriate grass in this part shade space because it just requires too many inputs and inputs into turf is not my thing. So what I'm going to do here today uh, is reduce it some. Uh, this spot where the pansies are, where the uh, yellow and blue or purple pansies are, uh, has been annuals uh, last, last season and of course this winter. I'm going to convert that little row to mostly perennials, things that will come back every year and bloom all summer. And I'm going to create a new annual space along the edge of this turf. And so several ways uh, to mark this out because I run a really gentle curve around, around here. I've done this long enough that I can pretty much go through with my trenching shovel here and make a nice curve. Um, it may be easier for some to get the uh, upside down uh, spray paint, which you can get pretty much anywhere, and uh, paint paint a line that you can follow, you know, with your shovel that needs to be smooth. I just, that's not really that smooth, um, but in one shot's the, about the easiest way to make it, make it a nice smooth curve like that. So you can mark it that way, or you could put down a, you could put down a water hose, uh, you know, on, on the angle like that. And then I'll just come back through and uh, just kind of define this uh, with my uh, with my trenching shovel right along that edge that I just painted just like that what I'm going to do is actually take uh, this turf out just like this I had tilled all this up this soil is uh, actually uh, very much improved back here and so I'm just going to scrape under this uh, after I edge it and uh, and pull this up obviously if you need to spray it you need to spray it um, but for me, I can make pretty quick work of cutting this edge and then following along with that and uh, cutting the uh, turf out of it. Uh, after that, I'm going to till because the roots from this zoysia grass and these weeds are still here. So I'm gonna turn that over a couple times with my electric tiller, so that's next. I'm just cutting this into small segments that I can, uh, that I can pull out easily. Uh, if you're not physically strong enough to do this, I mean, you have the option of covering it in some sort of clear plastic maybe and letting it cook. Uh, although zoysia and Bermuda and centipede uh, can outlast you sometimes. Uh, I've got some of this zoysia has a uh, stepping stone sitting on it in the front garden. <laughs> A year later, almost, uh, with the stones sitting on top of it, uh, it will come. Some of it will come back to life when I take the stones off of it. So, kind of hard to bury these creeping grasses and get away with that. Um, so, I like to cut. I like to cut them out like this. The other option is to obviously spray, and I, you know, would rather not do that. But um, again, you can also get a sod cutter. That would be a uh, another option as well. You can rent, uh, rent a sod cutter to cut this out. Uh, this roots are still going to have to be uh, turned over a bit to make sure they're dead. And of course, this is going to still try to creep back in as long as this is zoysia grass over here. It's going to try to creep back into this bed. Just using a fork to clean up the big scraps. Got a low spot next to the property that these little pieces are going in. Where some uh, water stands pretty frequently, so this will be good to fill that in with. The grass has been removed, unfortunately, with zoysia and some of the particular weeds that are here. Uh, there's definitely roots still here that could come back very quickly. Uh, and again, zoysia spreads. And so I do, you know, until this zoysia grass is gone, it will try to creep into the bed, but I don't want it coming up in the annuals from underneath them. Um, I can defend the edge, a um, little harder to defend if it's coming up in the middle of it. So I'm going to run the electric tiller through here and uh, flip it over and see if I can rake out a little bit of that root material. Uh, this was composted, um, if you watch the sodding video, um, this was composted 
And you can see um, right here how much improved uh, this soil is. You know, uh, this was just solid clay back here. And I don't care what type of soil you have, if you have sand or clay. Everybody talks about if you see that little triangle that has loam up at the top of the uh, triangle and then clay and sand and they tell you you want to be closer to loam or you know uh, that loams are the best. I don't care what type of soil you have. If you will add compost to it, you can change it. Um, you can turn this in, um, you know, basically it's still clay. Look, if I flip this over, I didn't change the fact that this was clay, okay? What I did was the, the beneficial bacteria and the beneficial fungi moved in because the compost is food for them and it's cover for them. And, and then from, from those little microbes, you get beneficial nematodes and other beneficials, and then you get larger life like um, uh, earthworms. And those things carry all that stuff down, up and down in the ground. I'm just gonna tell you that there's no possibility that I could have done that with this shovel, with one foot, you know, two years ago. There's just no way. Um, again, I don't normally like to till because we're about to till this spot. It's going to uh, disrupt that system that I've put in place everywhere in this entire landscape. I'm doing it again just to kind of get this uh, grass out of here. Otherwise, it's going to drive me nuts uh, all season long. Again, anytime you're digging, make sure you know where lines are in your, uh, in your garden. I only have one buried line on this entire property, um, which is the gas line uh, and the water line. Uh, but th th those are way deep. Uh, electric and everything else comes in from up above, but know where you're digging, know, know what you're digging. Or th they're not lines where you're gonna dig. This little Sun Joe electric tiller, I've had it now for, gosh, almost the whole time I've had this channel, so about four years. It does, a, it does an adequate job on small, small things like this. And again, this is only the sec third time tilling here. I tilled the vegetable garden the first time. I tilled before the sod went down as much to get it level as anything. Uh, and then, uh, and now just trying to get some of these roots loose. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through here and try to get some of this loose uh, root material. Again, I will not get all of this up in one shot. There's just no possibility. I'll have to fight a little bit of it, but uh, uh, I am able to get a good amount of it by running that tiller through. I could run the tiller through again, and that would probably help uh, get a lot of this up. But if I see somewhere where there's obvious little roots, I'll kind of dig with my rake. But there's a lot of rocks in here, and I think most people be tempted to start pulling out rocks. There's nothing wrong with with small rocks in your in your garden. It irritates us, but it definitely does not bother the plants at all. I'm trying not to rake them out. So again, I'll go through here a couple times, just like I'm doing right now. You can see how much material you know I've dislodged. All of this is roots from that zoysia grass that will come back up in this uh, in this turf. I'll do this twice, maybe run the tiller through it a second time, and then break it a couple more times again. Now that that's been tilled and raked and tilled and raked, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the kind of official edge on it. Uh, despite the fact that this lawn looks terrible right now, most of this is annual winter weeds uh, that will die out pretty quick, and the zoysia grass is coming back. So it's gonna look it's gonna look actually pretty good here um, by the time it gets hot. Um, one, one good hot day will knock some of this poana back and, and that kind of thing, and it will look okay. Again, um, I've got bigger plans. I've got bigger plans for this space, but I am gonna try to have it look neat um, here uh, for, the next, for the next few months before those plans take place. And I'll go through here with my uh, trenching shovel and redefine that edge, because once I've tilled it and uh, uh, you know walked on it and raked it and everything else, my my edge has kind of disappeared um, that I had initially uh, painted on the ground. And uh, I, because I tilted it, it's go, it goes pretty quick and easy. But I'm trying for a nice, gentle curve. If, you, if I go down in here and I throw something back in here that looks like roots from the zoysia grass, um, I'll throw it out of this bed. 
before I put the compost down. Okay, so I don't care. You know, I'm going to call this video new annual bed. I have no idea what I'm actually going to call this video, but, you know, creating a new bed, whatever it is. I happen to be creating a bed for, for annuals, you know, like these pansies in the back. And so all I'm going to plant in is compost. I'm going to have compost on top of this very enriched soil. That's how I'm going to, uh, that's how I'm going to do my annuals. If this were going to be shrubs, trees, anything else, I'd have prepped it the exact same way. And then I would put compost down just like you're going to see me doing. And then I might put some sort of mulch on top of that, like the triple shredded hardwood that I have back there or wood chips or whatever the heck floats your boat on covering the ground. Um, and, uh, but again, for annuals, I'm just using the, uh, the straight compost. After I edged it there, I'm going to go through here and rake uh, this back out and I'll probably end up with even a little bit more grass in this, in this little pass as well. But I trench down and now I'm angling the bed back up so it drains down into the, uh, to, toward the front of the bed. Also having the annuals on a little bit of a slant shows them off a bit better. So there we go, I think this is gonna look great. But here's a big old piece of Bermuda or zoysia roots that I just found on that sweet path through here. I'm using the soil cube compost that you guys have seen me use uh, quite a bit. Uh, it's available for delivery in, I think, South Carolina, Georgia, and North Carolina. Um, but you can get, um, Raleigh has a municipal waste site where they, um, where they have compost and, uh, you know, there's lots of options for getting compost that's a little less, a little less expensive than this. I do like this product, um, you know, and it's delivered to the house, but, you know, again, I'm not, it's not a promotion for them or anything like that. I'm just uh, telling you what I'm using. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put maybe an inch of compost over this work that I just did and, 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 and call it done for the annuals. But the whole, you know, this compost is going to feed, like I told you, all those beneficial bacteria, all the beneficial um, fungi. And once they're doing their work in an aerobic soil, not an anaerobic soil, uh, anaerobic usually is too wet. Um, uh, in an aerobic condition, all of those beneficials will set the basis for everything else, for how your plants are fed. I use a very small amount of fertilizer out here, no synthetic fertilizer whatsoever. A uh, very small amount of organic fertilizer that you guys see me throw out, you know, once a year, literally twice a year in the vegetable garden, maybe three times a year in the vegetable garden, but and that's it. Um, because all of these other things are happening. You have nutrients in your soil, whether you have clay, sand, loam, doesn't matter. You have in soil <laughs> a combination of dirt, you know, which is the, which are, which are, you know, the sand or the clay or the um, uh, loam. And then by adding this organic material, it becomes soil. And in a living aerobic soil, your plants will be fed by the things that are already in the soil plus the sunlight um, through photosynthesis. So it sounds overcomplicated, but literally it just means get the grass out of the way and put compost down. <laughs> and that's, it's as simple as that. Definitely not gonna lie and say that that's not work because it actually is work. Remo removing grass is work. Again, you could have laid that edge out and then, uh, you know, and, and, then, and then sprayed it, gotten a sod cutter if it was a bigger space and you could justify renting a sod cutter. You can try to cover it if it's like fescue, um, you know, with boxes or plastic or something like that. But again, Bermuda, centipede, zoysia grass, the creeping grasses, again, can outlast you uh, sometimes. As a byproduct of um, expanding this bed where the annuals are going to go, the pansies are going to be able to stick around a little bit longer. Usually I'm making this crazy decision around the 1st of May to pull the pansies out. These will actually be able to stay here. As long as it stays, the temperature stays moderate, these should continue to grow and look great uh, here for the, uh, you know, for the next few months. I've got tons of stuff that were done from seed, several things that were purchased. You, you guys, if you watch this last year, this will be, in, you know, nothing but pollinator plants all the way around this turf edge. These weeds are going to die back. The zoysia is going to come back. It's going to look pretty good, but not perfect. Again, this is going to be a patio going forward. This is just, this was the entire process for this back garden space. And I get tons of questions about, you know, why are your plants, you know, waking up earlier? Why are your plants blooming later? Why are your plants, 
you know, um, you know, uh, you know, why are your things growing faster than mine are? All of it was based on initially getting this ground covered with compost and um, wood chips. You know, this, the, all the beds back here, all the planted spaces with wood chips. And that is what woke this soil up. And that's what's feeding the plants in this landscape, not a synthetic fertilizer. You think about plants need about, there's like 42 known nutrients that plants need known i mean you know that 42 if you use 10 10 10 that's three it's not going to uh, you know the best way to feed your plants is through this type of organic um change in the soil with with compost so there you go uh stick around uh follow along with the channel and uh, all this will be planted here in the next few weeks thanks for watching